get everyone. Welcome to New Tech. Before I get started today, I just want to say a massive thank you to those people who have subscribed, liked my videos, and given me some really positive comments. You guys are awesome. In today's video, we're going to be looking at my three axis DIY camera slider. So let's get started. I think the most impressive part of this build is the simplicity of the slider, but I was really impressed with how the overall build went and how quiet the motors are, making these shots seamless and giving 100% focus to the subject without distraction of the camera movement. I was inspired by many other YouTube makers and their DIY camera sliders. However, I decided to challenge my ability to design and create my very own slider. This was a journey of learning and sometimes that's the most valuable part of any project. I had some design conditions that I needed to adhere to. The first was that it had to be portable and easy to use. Secondly, I had to be strong and large enough to fit my Canon 5D camera. Thirdly, I was to ensure that the wires didn't get in the way of any movement or get tangled. And lastly, I wanted to use my slider around my CNC machine and needed to create some protection to the dust and debris. And well, with that, I think I did pretty well to tick those boxes throughout this build. Most of the parts of this design was made with my Ender 3 3D printer and certainly was my workhorse for this project. I wanted to create my design around simplicity by mounting both the pan and tilt motors opposite each other and consequently creating a massive learning curve to create my very first bevel gear concept for this build. Unfortunately, PLA is not a good contender when it comes to requiring smooth gears, and I had a fair amount of vibration caused by the 3D printed layers between the crown gear and the bevel gear. As you can imagine, this is not a good choice of materials for this application. I wanted to design a slider that was simple and worry-free when it came to the wiring used. Incorporating some kind of infinite rotation was certainly a challenge, however, with the use of these slippering wire capsules, it allowed me to avoid wires tangling and interrupting the rotational moves of each axis. In the development stage of this project, I wanted to test the rigidity of the movement and here you can see that I have maybe turned this up a little bit too far, however it certainly gave me the confidence that it can handle what I throw at it. I wanted to use this Lazy Susan bearing in my design for the pan axis. And as you can see here that my first test with my camera, it was looking pretty good and pretty smooth. However, I still wasn't happy with this axis and it was getting way too much play and vibrations with the movement. So I decided to explore solutions to fix this issue. I quickly realized that it was a huge mistake to use this Lazy Susan bearing and it had way too much play. In exploring how to reduce the movement, I came up with some pretty interesting experiments and especially using different elastic materials to reduce the vibrations. So I tried using this balloon wrapped around the gear. However, as you can see, it did chew up the balloon instantly. I also tried this flexible rubber coating to coat the gear, but unfortunately that was way too hard to coat the gear consistently and just made the vibrations worse. Well, I finally bit the bullet and decided to invest in printing with flexible filaments. And after a few hours of filling, I finally got a perfect gear made from clear TPU. I also decided to use this 110 millimeter bearing originally for a Cyclops 
3D scanner, and with these two changes, everything started to fall in place. After printing the base many times to improve the different iterations, I realized that in order to print the fine detail just for the teeth of the gear, I could print these parts separately and this certainly sped up the time for the printing and reduced the amount of printing errors. So here you can see that I'm installing the gear onto the base and using those location pins to align the gear. As for the motors, I went with these 2 amp NEMA 17 motors to drive the movement. However, this is certainly an overcompensation for what I needed for this project. And now it's time to finish installing the rest of the slider. Unfortunately, the top shell was one of two or three parts that I had to use support material to print all in one. However, I did my best to use non-support material for the rest of the parts. I ended up using an Arduino Mega Pro for the memory upgrade and the overall compact size of this board. The screen I used was a 1.3 inch OLED screen and the rotary encoder for the digital menu selection. I did attempt my first CNC PCB milling and well, let's just say that it wasn't my best work, however, certainly functional for what I needed. And then it was on to many hours of soldering and wiring the board. I attempted to keep all the components streamlined and rather than mounting the headers, I just soldered the components straight to the board to save a lot of space. The motor drivers that I used on this project was TMC2209 motor drivers and they're fantastic for this project because of their magic silent ability. Well, I'm not the most confident in my coding ability, however I was inspired by a fellow creator Raj Shind and his camera slider that he built. So I ended up using his code as the foundation and I added some more features to my project to move the third axis, plus I also added a second position to the slider so it no longer had a start and end but a midpoint as well. And this gave me more creative flexibility over the camera movement. And then it was on to the final assembly. Unfortunately, I can't show you everything in this video, otherwise we'll be here for hours. However, the build came together reasonably well, and then I was on to the tensioning of the V-slot wheels and the belt. The belt that I used was a 10 millimeter GT2 belt, and it was attached to both ends of the slider using screws. I've included adjustable feet of the slider to make minor adjustments to the height as needed, and some end brackets with threaded insert nuts to mount to the tripod. You might be wondering what this blue band around the slider is and well it does kind of remind me of those Canon L series bands around their lenses. However, it does provide something much greater than aesthetics. It is actually the belt tensioner for the tilt axis and it helps separate the motor gear from the top gear creating a lot of tension so it stops the belt slipping. This SDL file can easily be changed on your 3D print slicer and to be stretched vertically to cater for the height required for your belt. And then it was finally alive. So let's give it a go and see what it can do. I've uploaded all my SDL files to my Thangs profile and the code assembly instructions to my GitHub repository. If you want to check them out, please find the links below. And if you decide to create this project for yourself, please feel free to tag me on my Instagram page at newtechcreative. 
Well, unfortunately it has come to the end of today's project, but thank you so much for watching and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Guys, please make sure that you have subscribed because I've got some really fun content coming up soon. So thanks very much and I'll see you next time.